Somebody needs to give a shout of God. Kaila le bobo samahila talia. moment of time you are going to forget yourself and will be worshipping him in tongues 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 It's our night of ascendancy. We worship your majesty. We exalt your name. We thank you for gathering us unto yourself. We thank you for making your mercy and your grace available. And we thank you for tonight. As we trust you to stretch forth your hand and reach every single individual that is here in your presence. Be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please welcome somebody as you take your seat. And if it is possible, those people managing the sound console, I need some feedback on these monitors, if it is possible. If it's not possible, then uh, I, I will be content. But if it's possible, put some feedback on this Monitor. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Acts of the Apostles. I would like us to take a witness from Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1. And we will do verse... Eight, the popular verse of power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And unto the uttermost parts of the earth. It's a very common scripture that we know of heart. And that's why I did not need the aid of my Bible to say out the wordings of that verse of scripture. That verse of scripture was given in a capacity building effort that Jesus put together to equip the functionaries that will be responsible for extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God. I know you don't believe me. 
All right, let me show you a verse of scripture to um, establish that fact. Are you there? Still with me? Okay, let's begin from Acts chapter 1, verse 1. He said, the former treaties, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. It means that entrance into the capacity building seminar was free, admission was free, but it was not available for everybody. The people that had access to that seminar were people that were chosen by the Lord. And it's only those that he chose that he gave commandments by the Holy Spirit. So this is not the idea of a typical lecture. Because in a typical lecture, the lecturer doesn't give you commandments. They were chosen. And, uh, and it's also, we also need to say at this point that if God, through his spirit, is not giving you commandments as to how to regulate your life, it may be that he, he did not choose you. Because all those he chose, he gave commandments. He exercised government over everyone that he chose to labor with him in extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. In verse 3, the Bible says part of the equipment that Jesus made available to them to make them competent for the kind of assignment he was going to deploy them into was that he showed himself alive unto them. I'm not talking about the Jesus on the cross. I'm not talking about the Jesus that walked miracles, but the Jesus that rose from the dead. He showed himself alive unto them. And the way he showed himself alive unto them was not by doctrine. You know that when, when the brethren... Those guys that were going to Emmaus, Jesus intercepted their journey and began to discuss with them. Somewhere along the line, Jesus began to reveal himself to them from the scriptures. It was a word encounter. And as he revealed himself from the scriptures, the spirit of God began to overwhelm their hearts such that when the actual point of disclosure took place, the guys testified that when he opened the scriptures to them, their hearts burned. I'm not talking about a word encounter. The guys that were admitted for the seminar, the Bible says that part of the investment that Jesus made was that he showed himself alive unto them by many infallible proofs, not by doctrine, but by signs and wonders. Speaking to them 40 days, on the issues that pertain to the kingdom of God. Jesus had 40 days from the time of his resurrection to the time of his bodily ascension uh, into the heavens. He had 40 days and he devoted those 40 days to be capacity building days. If, are you with me? It was the very core, the very substance of the truth of the word of God that was the content of his emphasis and his emphasis was pertaining to the things concerning the kingdom of God. So that's what the Bible is about. It's about the administration of God's kingdom. The administration of God's reign. The administration of God's government. These guys had to understand the kernel. The actual substance of emphasis that was in the body of truth called the Bible. It is about the kingdom of God. Are you, are you here? Oh, you are not here. You are not here. It's about the kingdom of God. And in order for the kingdom of God to find expression, there were several things that would need to happen. That's where prayer becomes necessary in order for the kingdom of God to become established. The subject of the lecture was to bring them into the understanding 
of how the kingdom of God could dominate every territory, every sphere, every nation. Is that Bahati of, of Tanzania? Oh my God. It's about the kingdom of God, how Bahati would take the influence of Jesus to the land of Arusha in Tanzania. It's about the kingdom of God. So that was the subject. Uh, but you, even though it was free, Jesus will have to choose you before you partake of the education. And everyone he chose, the first investment he made on their lives was that he showed himself alive by proofs of power, by proofs of signs, and by proofs of wonders. You've heard my story how that I was born in Tamara. And I could not speak. When Jesus wanted to show himself alive to me, what he did was that he touched my vocal cord and uncovered my capacity not just to communicate with human language, but through the instrumentality of utterance that is given by the Spirit of God. I'm talking about spirit-energized communication that relates the heart of God to the heart of man. Any day I wake up from my slumber, my sleep, and I find inherent in me the ability to speak fluently, I remember the Jesus that is alive. That was how he revealed himself to every participant in this seminar. He revealed himself as the Jesus that is alive. Tonight, on this conference grounds, Jesus is going to show himself alive to somebody. <laughs> Woo! Not by Bible study experience. But by infallible proofs. Things that even in the laboratory you cannot argue with those results. That was how Jesus showed himself alive. He knocked off doubt. By the manifestations that he put forth. Are you still with me? All right, so I, I'm just trying to establish the fact that uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8 was one of the deliverables that resulted from this capacity building effort that Jesus put in place. My emphasis is not the lecture Jesus gave in this capacity building program, no. There are seven items that were raised here. One of the items is the item that I want to unveil to us. Out of the seven, you study the six. Every kingdom functionary that is going to make an effect in a territory must understand the matching orders that Jesus gave to his functionaries on this occasion because it forms the bedrock. Are, are, you, are you still there? Are you there? Are you falling? You are not falling. Are you? Now, give me, give me strings. Let, I think... Uh, Let's go high. You understand when we're up there. Hallelujah. <laughs> I say hallelujah. So there, there are seven matters, but the matter that is of interest tonight is Acts chapter 1 verse 8. First investment he gave them was to show them that he was not dead. I'm alive. I'm alive enough to prove that I'm alive. That's what he was saying. A man that is going to be a spokesman for Jesus, that has no evidence that he's alive, will not make so much profit to the kingdom of God. So Jesus showed them that death had no power over him. Jesus showed them that darkness had no power over him. I, I, I know because you read your Bible, but you may not have meditated on this matter. How that a man that died, nobody organized night vigil, no prayer meeting to raise him from the dead. After three days of silence, he came out from the grave and then started interacting with the people that knew him. You are not with me. Normal people should not be able to attend this seminar. Normal, you are not following. You are, you are not following. It, are you still with me? Yes, sir. 
An accident took place and they sent a message to a man that his wife had died because he was, she was in that vehicle. The man took a snapshot of the number plate before the trip took place. He was supposed to visit someone. And then on the news, she saw the vehicle with the same number plate compressed like a can. And people had come to him and said, your wife died. Meanwhile, she was the only one that survived without a, a, a scratch. And she took another vehicle, left the accident scene, came back home. <laughs> the man was not happy to see his wife. He, he escaped. <laughs> and what are you talking about? Somebody that you saw, he was buried. And they used a stone to block the edge of the tomb. He now walked out. You did not organize night prayer, night vigil, no human effort. He strode out. And then he came for a lecture. Will you attend? <laughs> I don't want to go into that matter. It's a deep matter. To whom he showed himself alive. After his passion, after his suffering, they saw him suffer. The Romans scourged and made the best of him. So much so that you will not be able to tell where his eye was. Because after the scourge had given him 39 strokes, his configuration was utter and they saw him melt away with affliction. There was not so much manliness left when he hung on the cross. Passion of the Christ gave him covering for his nakedness. But in actual fact, he hung naked. How do you even bury that kind of body? It's accidented. It's mutilated. How do you bury it? The people that were closest to him had escaped, so they don't even know how he ended up in that tomb. When they told them this is the tomb that they kept him, there was no evidence. There was a mystery around him. The first thing he did to the people that would take the gospel to the ends of the earth was that he came out of that tomb and showed himself alive. I don't want to press because that's not my emphasis. At first, it will, it will, people will run out. People will run out of the building. He will go and catch them and bring them. Say, don't worry, I am I am alive. So I'm imagining that it took like two days to get them to accept that a dead man is now alive. Ah, it took like two days. Because me, I will escape first with my wife. <laughs> when you try to call the line, it's off permanently. <laughs> what is happening? they dead. Hey! It took like two days of consistent inoculation. And then they came to the to terms with the fact that a man that was previously dead is a man speaking to us. And then after, on the third day, that's when we'll go close and then touch him and run again. <laughs> then we'll now confirm that he has substance, he has flesh, he has bone, he's not a spirit that will just vanish. <sighs> it's after that we can start the lectures, but there must be a safe distance between the lecturer. <laughs> oh, I, I think you are understanding what I'm talking about. He showed himself alive. It was an exclusive syndicate. Because God will not strip to this extent for just any other ordinary man. Those were days of glory. And I don't have time to tell you every item of his discussion with them. But the broad heading, the theme of the education was about the things Pertaining to the kingdom of God. All right. So it was during the course of the conference that he made this statement. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is coming up, is come upon you. The power will be a result of spiritual capital. I'm going to make spiritual capital available to you. 
This spiritual capital, if you know how to deal with it, if you know how to tend it, if you know how to respond to it, one of the products that is going to produce is called power. Are you, are you there? I know you are, not, you are not there. The Lord gave me the privilege to function in the oil industry for 16 years. If you have labored in the oil industry as I've done, there's one thing you cannot miss, which is crude oil. Crude oil is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons. Crude oil is not useful in its crude state until it is subjected to refinement. And what we call a refinery is what an average chemist knows to be a fractional distillation column. So we introduce crude oil into the fractional distillation column. Are you there? There are two things you manipulate to get the best of crude oil. The temperature and the pressure. As you begin to manipulate crude oil with temperature and pressure, all the fine fractions, useful fractions, will begin to fractionate out of crude oil. The word for power in this scripture is the word dunamis. In the Greek, there are four words for power. We have iskus. We have kratos. We have dunamis. We have other, some other verbs that point to power. Mekatos. All of those verbs. So many four words for power and two verbs that are related to power. So the power matter is a critical matter in Greek language. But the word that was used here is a word dunamis. And dunamis has two meanings in Greek language. The first meaning is potential energy. Potential energy. I'm going to give you potential energy. In its potential state, it's not useful, but you need to convert it to the kinetic state. And in that kinetic state, so many uses will come out of it. It is possible for you, having received the Holy Ghost, to be powerless. It is possible for, how, uh, for you, having received the Holy Spirit, to be confused. It is possible for you, having received the Holy Ghost, to be helpless and hopeless. And the reason is because Jesus can sleep in the boat. The Holy Spirit can sleep in your life. If you don't find any need for him and you are not in the business of putting him to work, he's going to find convenience in sleeping in your heart. And your life will be as though he was never present. So, that's the potential energy that I'm talking about. In order for you to make crude oil useful, because crude oil is potential energy. It has a lot of value but it doesn't have, uh, it's not useful in its potential state. You need to subject it to refinement in order for you to harness all its viable fractions. That's how the Holy Ghost is. And the refinery that does the conversion of Holy Ghost power into fine fractions of possibilities in measures of grace and mercy. It's called the ability to speak in tongues. That's your refinery. Of all the gifts that the Holy Spirit makes available to the believer, it is only your ability to speak in tongues that you can use at will. So the Bible says that I will pray in the Spirit. The Bible says I will pray in my understanding also. The key word in that scripture is will. It means you can decide to pray in the Spirit. But you cannot decide to switch on the gift of word of knowledge. You cannot decide to switch on the gift of healing. 
You cannot decide to switch on the gift of discernment of spirit. All of these other gifts are going to operate as the spirit of God wills. But your ability to speak in tongues is something you can switch on as you will. Are you there? That's the refinery. The spiritual capital that we received in the person of the Holy Spirit is supposed to be subjected to refinery operations. And the thing about the refinery is this. A functional refinery doesn't need to go for turnaround maintenance until 25 years. A refinery should be running consistently, subjected to minor maintenance, and is running consistently for 25 years before they shut it down. But your own refinery needs turnaround maintenance after every two weeks. And in a certain country, the budget for turnaround maintenance is part of the budget every year. But the technical philosophy behind turnaround maintenance is that you will need it only after 25 years of active, active use. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. I, I just spoke in parables there. So if you picture a functional re refinery, in order for them to drive a refinery for 25 years, they need to be sure of crude oil stock pile. And that's the reason why they strike deals in the futures market with nations that have crude oil capacity so that they can have available raw material to drive the refinery for at least 25 years. That's how your prayer life is supposed to be running. Before we go for greasing of your prayer life, you run for 25 years first. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you now see why there's no power in your life? Because there's a breakdown in, the, in refinery operations. So you cannot convert the potential capacity of the spiritual capital that you have received into liquid value. You are not with me. Okay. The Bible says that he that sows into the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows into the spirit shall of the spirit reap life. The Bible also says that with the measure with which you meet out, it is that same measure that the refinery will give you. So if you decide that your prayer life will be for 30 minutes, what God will do is that he will manufacture grace out of that refinery that is commensurate to 30 minutes investment. You'll be living on that 30 minutes possibility as the reality behind your civilization. Your life today, sister, is exactly how you wanted it to be. Because it is reflective of how much investment you have made in the matter of this spiritual capital in the use of your refinery. Now, you see, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, only one product, one output product was mentioned from the refinery. Oh, you are not here. You don't even believe. So, wait. Let me, let me show you. you. Somebody is saying, you are interpreting the Bible the way you. Give me Luke chapter 1. Quickly. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Luke 4, 1. I have a, 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 a journey for us. There's a journey. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Are you there? So, after John the Baptist's baptism, 
Jesus was baptized in water and the Holy Ghost at the same time. The water dried up. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit did not dry up. Are you there? You are not there. He was immense in water and he, he got soaked. He came out of the water praying and the Holy Spirit came from heaven and came upon him. The water dried up, but the influence of the Holy Spirit that he received began to lead him. The Holy Ghost did not dry up. And the Holy Ghost led him into the wilderness to meet with the devil, to be tempted by the devil. God did not allow Jesus encounter the devil until he was full of the spirit. Are you there? Highly mobilized by the spiritual capital. It was in that frame that he was competent to meet with Satan. While I don't have time and I'm not concerned about how the interaction with Satan went, in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 14, please put it on the screen, let us read. And Jesus returned in the power of the spirit. You see, Jesus had gone to use his refinery. And the result was that one product out of that refinery was already actualized because of his engagement. Are you there? You are not there. There are so many products that can come out of the complex mixture. So many products. Wisdom can come out of it. Because of the investment that God has placed on your life, for instance, God is not expecting that you'll be in a state of confusion at any point in your life because the potential of wisdom is in the Holy Ghost. But what is in the Holy Ghost will not automatically begin to make value to you except you subject him to refinement then those products will begin to come out of the refinery. If we see the products that come out of your refinery, we can tell for how many years you've been running it. Because in refinery operations, when you kickstart refinery, and you bring sweet crude, which is low in sulfur, and you will ingest it into the refinery, the first product that comes out, they are what we call associated gases. Some of you... I know, Pastor, Pastor Odoma, you have a gas cylinder in your kitchen. What happened was that the moment they put the, refiner, the crude oil into the refinery, before it reached 80 degrees Celsius, the associated gases began to escape. So they now connect a pipe and transfer the gases into the gas tank and begin to measure the pressure of the tank. These gases in that gas tank, are you here? Have variable properties. But in order to name it LPG, which is the one you used to cook, the properties must be within a certain range. And we can manipulate those, those, those gases and those properties until it comes into range so that you can safely use it for cooking. Are you there? So the first product that comes out are the lighter products, which are the gaseous products. Once upon a time, a professor whose wife was barren for 12 years now received a miracle. And the woman was able to conceive. After 12 months of gestation, she gave birth to a son. And the professor traveled to his hometown and got a 12-year-old Girl, to come and take care. Oh. Unknown to prof. The 12-year-old was recently coronated as the custodian of the, of the witchcraft totem in the village. Oh, Maya Komina Si. Ah. Previously, the old woman that held the honor of being the chieftain, the warden of witchcraft in the region, used to use that Small lady has, has two. So when she wants to pass judgment, you will put the right hand on it. 
before she passes church. A coven is a court. That's what it is. So she's the one that used to stand at his staff. You know, when somebody is old, he uses walking stick. The walking stick of that witch was this 12 year old. So she had all the endowments and power. When they released the first consignment of spirits into the, the 12 year old to prepare her to become a house for demons, the first consignment, that one, it will, you, you will run mad first. And then they will use witchcraft to cure you. Oh. Among all in, in the entire village, it was only this one that professor saw to bring home. Oh. So she was new in the world of commanding those demons. So one day, professor made her angry and he killed him. Just, he tested one of the spells and it worked. He died. When he died, she projected in the spirit to the village for counseling. There's an older witch there that said, no, 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 that's not how we use this weapon. Don't, don't be killing like that. The way we do it is that we, want, we don't want people to be able to trace the killing to us. Ah, go back and raise him. Unfortunately, when the lady got back to raise the man, they had in, in, invited some pastors to come and raise him from the dead. And the pastors were speaking in tongues. La kaba bo 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 and their tongues produced smoke. There was one kind of smoke that their tongues produced. Their tongues could not raise the man from the dead, but it generated smoke. And the smoke was the reason why the girl could not pass to go and raise the man. The pastor's refinery produced only the associated gases. It was gas they were producing. Kai, you are not with me. Now, ee, Help me ask your neighbor, are you producing <laughs> gas? Amalwale. <laughs> the pastors could only produce associated gas, and the gas could not raise the dead, and the gas would not allow the witch to go and undo her spell. That was how they buried that man. Because of gases. Gases. When they gave her a terrible beating, she now confessed and said, this is what happened. I was going to raise him, but they were generating gas. Because in refinery operations, the lighter products will come out first. Is your spirit light? All of us are speaking in tongues. If God opens your eyes, you might see that choking strange gas is in this. At 110 degrees, then the liquid products will start coming out. The first liquid product that will come out is household kerosene. No, aviation turbine kerosene. The one they use to power jet engines. The particulate matter of ATK is almost zero. So that's what comes out. It's very pure. And then dirty kerosene will come out with high particulate matter. That's the one you use for your cooking stove. After that, premium motor spirit will come out at 121 degrees. Then diesel, automotive gas oil will come at 130 degrees. Ah, are you? Do you understand what I'm talking about? You see, the more you use the refinery, the more the products will start becoming heavier. Jesus only told us about one product. Not, it's, not, it's not exhaustive. He said, ye shall receive. That's just one product. But there are many products that will come out of the refinery. And it is your usage of the refinery that will determine at what level which kind of product comes out. When the gases are coming out, there are signs the Holy Spirit will litter across your spirit to know that gases are being produced. When liquid is coming out, 
There are signs the Holy Spirit will give you to show you that you have entered into the realm of liquid. There is no anointing that becomes functional in your life that the Holy Spirit will not give you a sign to show that that anointing is being administered. It means there's an upgrade on your refinery production. I will not lie to you. I asked God for power for many years. I know many of you that came to preach and said, no, you were not looking. Me, I was looking. And, and even now, I seek power. I seek strange power. Strange power. Oh, I was going to England the last time with my wife, and people in the airport recognized me. And one ran and said, come for prayer. And I touched her like at the airport. She went down straight. The airport became, it, there was pandemonium. I just say, let me release. She couldn't stand up. One, one guy now ran away from me. I said, hey, hey, come, come back, come back. <laughs> Please help me. Me, I'm looking for power. <laughs> I'm sure. Power. Power. Uh. <laughs> Where are my brethren from Cameroon? Okay, you see them. They are strong men. Those men you are seeing. There is a place. What's the name of that place? Where is Philip? Booya! What are you going to do in Boya if you don't have power? What are you looking for? Mm. So Jesus gave us an idea of one of the possible products that will come out. He did not, his, his idea is not by any means exhaustive. But he's just using that as a benchmark. That at the time that power begins to come out of your refinery, you yourself would have known experientially that many other products have started coming out and your refinery is capable of much more than power. That's the first definition of dunamis. is potential energy. Potential like crude oil. Are you there? The second meaning of dunamis means inherent energy. It's just like your phone. Are you with me? Bishop, what kind of phone do you use? Samsung. The operating system for Samsung is Android. And if you want an application that will run on Android, you go to where? The Play Store. The Play Store is the place where you find the applications that can run on Android. And when you go to a Play Store, you find an application. You say, okay, this is what I want. You click on it. I want you. Then they'll ask you terms and conditions, which we don't read. Then you now click and say, yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay? Fortunately for us, that's not how the mark of the beast will be administered. If not, all of us would have been... So he said, yes, I agree. <laughs> download. Then he begins to download. 25%, 37%, 54%, 66%, 79%, 80%, 90%, 100%. The moment he downloads 100%, you no longer need to go to Google to take permission to use the application because it's now one with your phone. So what God did was that he downloaded the application of the Holy Ghost and installed it on your spirit. And the implication of that is that he transferred the responsibility of usage to you. So you determine how you use the application. When I found out that because it is inherent in me, it's now up to me and not up to God. It changed my life. 
I learned how to pray walking on the street. I pray in the supermarket. I used to pray offshore, pray on the tank, pray on the highway, pray on the, the motorbike. One day I prayed and I was consumed and we lost, the, we passed where I was supposed to drop. We went. We, <laughs> I was engaging, engaging the refinery, engaging. We went for like 30 minutes. I forgot that we have. Ah. When I now recovered myself, we're far away. We are strayed. And I begged the man, I said, you know what? We are lost. But the way to find ourselves is go back. <laughs> oh, I remember on the beach in Tanzania, the foot of the Indian Ocean. I was speaking in tongues and just walking on the beach. Just, just, I didn't know that I, I, I had strayed. Left my hotel a long time ago. And while I was speaking in tongues, Jesus came and stood by my side on the beach in the afternoon. When the product, when you start, when, when you continue using it, heavy products will start coming. Your spirit is too light for Jesus to appear to you. you, you, you no, no, it's gas. And meanwhile, at every level, there are possibilities that are bound. On, at the gaseous level, at least you have seen one of the possibilities, which is cannot. The defense line is too much for a witch to penetrate, even at the gaseous level. Jesus said, you will be totally incapable without knowing how to enhance the capacity of this spiritual capital that I'm making available to you. If you are going to extend the frontiers of my kingdom, you will need power. But he said this power will come through a system. I'm going to make spiritual capital available to you. It will be installed capacity to be installed on your human spirit and responsibility for usage will be yours. So there are a few scriptures in the Bible that speak about dunamis, especially when God says he has made that which pertains for life and for godliness available. It's a complex mixture. All of the resource is in the complex mixture, is in the crude oil, but you will need to refine in order for you to begin to experience those dimensions. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. So, I traveled to a senior minister that used to operate in power and I asked him, how are you doing this thing? Because I saw him on the crusade ground. People gave their life to Christ about 200 people. And he said, well, you are going to speak in tongues now. So I opened my eyes to see. When he said, let's pray. Close your eyes. My own eye was open. <laughs> 200 of them started speaking in tongues. He did not touch anybody. So I, I went to ask, how are you doing this thing? He says, by fasting and prayer. I said, Kai, your answer is too simple. It's refinery operations. So I started fasting. I started praying. I started fasting. I started praying. And for those that were with me on campus, anyone present here today? Who were, you were there when I was there. Huh? Oh, okay, there, there's one. Thing. You can attest to the fact that I was a prayer monger. Okay. Oh, that's my disciple. That one there is my disciple. I afflicted them with prayer. That was my life. I was, I was seeking the law. We saw a little power then, but that was not what I was looking for. We continued after campus. And one day I went to preach somewhere in the north. 
and we were just praying in tongues. The atmosphere was open. The atmosphere was powerful. And suddenly, I was no longer in the building. I was standing somewhere where Jesus was. And he was reading a document to me. This was, these were the words of the document. Take my presence and power to the peoples of the world. That was where it started. Take my presence and power to the peoples of the world. Then I came back from where I went. I came back into the meeting. That meeting I could not preach because the moment I stood by the pulpit, oof, That was how it began. Power, miracles, signs, wonders. Oh, I am a silly candle obo. So I want to prophesy to you: you will receive power tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where we were. We're trying to check in. In one of the airports in Europe. And I saw somebody on a wheelchair. The only reason I was mobilized. They were winning the person around. I was mobilized, but I was not sure whether they would jail me if I make that attempt. That's the only reason why I did not. I said, There is a consciousness that will come upon you when God opens you up to another layer of spiritual possibility. That consciousness is not everybody that has it. You only have it if you have entered into that realm. The signs, the communication code at that level is not available to the average believer. You determine where you want to operate. I knew that my life would not be complete without power, so I sought it. I sought it diligently. I came to tell you, you need power. And the only way this power will come is when you switch on your refiner. In the eyes of Jesus, you need power to, for your daily life, not just for crusades. Oh my God. Oh my God. Somewhere in the oil industry, somebody needed the promotion badly. That he went to somewhere in western Nigeria and brought the revered altar. I don't want to mention the name of the altar. The revered one. In fact, mm -hmm. The people that keep that altar are not supposed to be able to enter a vehicle because it has to do with iron. They are not supposed to be able to enter an aeroplane because there's iron. It was built with iron. How he was able to transport those priests to Abuja? <laughs> oh my God. On Sunday, you know, we don't go to work on, on Sunday. So they were there doing enchantment. Somebody forgot a key and he went to the office on Sunday to pick it. When he saw what was going on there, they called him. They did not harass him. They said, if this thing leaks, you will get missing. You... <laughs> I'm not talking about a crusade. I'm talking about office. Office work. The, the one we wear ties to. There's power there. Guess what? Even though the information leaked that he brought those people, they promoted. If, in the interest of the office, <coughs> yeah, they had to promote it. Had to. <laughs> if you need it that badly, take so that all of us can. You, you need power. Oh, Jesus. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. The way you will know them is by power. In the eyes of Jesus, you will need supernatural power to live a normal, natural life. Not for crusade. He said, these signs will fall. People that believe in me, you will, you, they are not hidden. You know them by these signs. 
first question I have for you is how, help me ask your name, how is your refinery? Has he experienced breakdown or is undergoing turn around? <laughs> I think I need to stop there. Are you with me? Okay, come with me. Yes, I found somebody that has encouraged me. So go to the book of Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Christians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Next verse. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually. What was your business? We we give ourselves continually to prayer. Do you realize that prayer comes first before the ministry of the world? Because in the apostolic community, prayer was the mechanical energy. Oh my. You see, eh, in church life, the energy that will drive church life and drive church life into the will of God as revealed by Acts chapter 2 is corporate prayer. Corporate prayer was part of church life. I mean, that we afflict you with prayer until you get tired and submit to prayer. That's what I'm talking about. Because there were four agendas in church life. Four agendas. They continued. In the apostles' doctrine, you, you know all of that. So part of the apostolic culture was the corporate prayer culture. That no one could escape. There was nothing like prayer department. Everybody was exposed to prayer. So prayer was the mechanical energy that was used to drive church life. So there were daily prayer initiatives. As you will find in the book of Acts. Are you there? There were monthly prayer initiatives. No, daily, weekly, monthly, annually. So there must be a daily Huh? And then there's an intensity. There's a monthly arrangement. There's a weekly arrangement. Then there's an annual arrangement. Because church life survives on the life of prayer. Are you there? And those that are called into pulpit ministry, the description of pulpit ministry in the book of Acts chapter 6 is the picture of a man that is spread out before the Lord. You, prayer is your preoccupation. It is out of what you tap through prayer. What is coming out of your refinery that you used to illuminate your Bible? Huh? The powers inside. Because every time you touch the Bible, you should be able to go beyond the shell and to touch the dossier the law. Because it is God that spoke. His words are eternal. They are spoken today as they were when they were spoken. And they are captured in letters. And the Spirit of God will travel with you beyond the letters to touch thus say the Lord. If your experience with scripture is not thus say the Lord, you are dealing with letters. It means you are not spread out. You will become a teacher of philosophy. You will raise intelligent sinners. Because their lives will lack the ability to conform to what is required for the journey into the image of Christ. So the, a mini, the description of a minister is a man that is spread out in prayer. That's his life. If he touches the Bible, the Bible becomes life. He touches the sick, the sick receives life. It's what you are in prayer. That's who you are in ministry. 
He said, we, we have found our place. We'll be shaped by the ministry of prayer. We'll be shaped by the ministry of the word. We'll become able to dispatch the word of God when we are before the altar. So, analyze your calling very well before you accept it. Because it's a call for you to remain before the altar. I know there's a lot of money to count now. But that's not why you are called. You are called to be before the altar. There are a lot of checks to sign. That's not why you are called. A lot of courtesy calls to make because you are becoming influential. So they are asking for you in government house. That's not why you are called. I've had two invitations to government house. I've not gone. Because it, it clashed with the reason why I was called. So I had to stay with the calling. I pray one of the invitations will come when I, I have finished what I'm supposed to be doing by the altar. Maybe that one I will, but the two times it was not possible because I had to be spread before the altar. The reason why you didn't see me this morning was because I was by the altar. It was 3.40 p.m. that grace came. There will be miracles this night for your information. Miracles. We will give ourselves to the ministry of the word of God. Your business can begin to prosper stupendously. No that you are not called for business. As it's prospering, let your wife be managing it. You, spread yourself. Spread yourself. Spread yourself before the altar. Spread yourself. So, 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 he said, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the world. Okay, next verse. This is the list of the people that they chose. First on the list, Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. It was only Stephen's CV that was read out among the people that were selected to be deacons. So we are going to trace the life of Stephen. Go to Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Quickly. And Stephen, full of faith and what? So the Holy Ghost that Stephen had received, the spiritual capital that Stephen had received at this time was converted to what? Power. It means Stephen's refinery was operational. The Bible did not say, and you shall receive speaking in tongues when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. He said, power. He said, this speaking in tongues will be an initial evidence that will provide the refinery to release the substance of power. There is a potential for power in the arrangement. But if your refinery is not functional, you will not arrive at the place where power resides. I think my exhortation, we can end it there. I wanted to show you how Jesus raised the dead, what he used to raise the dead. I wanted to show you, how did he? How did he raise the dead? The doctors told you that your womb cannot take a child. Oh, and you believe. Power will give you another life and a different experience. So my friend called me and said, he has a problem. I said, what's your problem? He said, my child is sickle cell. Her genotype is sickle cell. That... Um, she has never had any crisis before today. 
But she just had a crisis. I said, okay. I will visit you. Then the Lord now allowed us to arrive at Lagos from one of our trips. So I said, well, I'm in Lagos and I'm tired. I can't live here. But can you bring that your daughter? I, I was weak from jet lag. From Minneapolis to Lagos, I was weak. So I came out from upstairs, came down, put my hand on the lady. No physical strength. And prayed a prayer of faith and went upstairs. I said, after 14 days, go and run a test. They did the test. Her genotype was AA. And it's AA till today. I had to study Jesus. How he gave out miracles. How he raised the dead. The resources that he used to do the supernatural. I studied it. God did not plan for any of us to be ordinary people, ordinary men and women. No. Tonight, you are going to repair your refinery. If there is a leakage, grease is leaking out of a certain chamber that is not giving you the capacity to do conversion. The catalytic converter of your refinery must be, must be renewed. Because it needs to convert crude oil to some fine products. Can we rise and check the refinery in a moment? Can we, can we check the refinery? Check its functionality. Can it take you for 25 years? Can it take you for 10 years? The, the power you are making available, can it take you for 15 years? Can it take you for 20 years? Oh my God. Oh my God. Tonight. Can we ask that the Lord will do a work on my refinery? I can't hear you cry. I can't hear somebody cry. Tonight you will receive something. Check the refinery. He did not say you receive speaking in tongues. You receive the capacity for power. You receive the capacity for the supernatural. Natural life is supernatural. You will receive power. Hey! Bale no boko bela ika maalata. Check that refinery tonight. us to live praying without ceasing light a time of come and malaya to buria aila la bobo to kole balatwa
Iate bobo santori abriga matani male. Iate bobo bobo santeli abarabala. Ia la 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 In the name of Jesus. Two things. When you have no evidence whether or not your prayer is effective, it is most effective. If Satan wants you to stop praying, he will attack your emotions and make the prayer look dry, make you feel lonely. Whenever you feel that way, use your will to push it. Can we ask that the Lord will strengthen our will against the current of manipulation? Strengthen my will against the current of manipulation. You need to be stubborn to break forth. Strengthen my will against the current of deception, the current of manipulation. Give me the power to stay. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. So I want to pray a prayer. We'll do this for 25 minutes. And I'll take my seat. If I say in the name of Jesus, you said a big amen. In the name of Jesus. Hey. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, when you notice that some people are manifesting, just help me drop them here because we'll need to do some deliverance. Oh, yes. oh, oh, oh. oh, just help me drop them. Help me. Because some evil spirits will be casted out tonight. In the name of Jesus! Listen to me. If you came with someone crippled, put your hands on the person's legs. If you are blind, you have an eye condition, lay your hands on your eyes. If there's pain on your body, maybe a growth, cancer, put your hand where that growth is. Fibroid, tumor. Things will come out of people's body tonight. In the name of Jesus! (laughs) 
In the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. I bind every sickness. I bind every disease. I bind every affliction. I bind every curse. I command the yoke to break. In the name of Jesus Christ. Deafening spirits be bound. Come out of the ears in the name of Jesus. Blinding spirits be bound. Come out of the eyes in the name of Jesus. Pain, go. Come out of their bodies in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of paralysis. I take authority over you. I say come out, come out, come out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I arrest every spirit of insanity running through the family. I break your power. I destroy your yoke. I command you, take your hands off. Take your hands off. Take it off. Take it off. In the name of Jesus Christ. seed that Satan planted hoping to get a harvest from your life. Today I destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ. I destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ. I destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Oh. Be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the Lord removing something from somebody's waist. That pain that you carry on your waist. The Lord's hand is upon it. I destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I speak to the eyes. I see. Hear, hear. Lame, walk. Pain, go. 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 Sickness, go. Sickness, go. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you came with someone using a cane to walk, take the cane away. Let the person walk. Let the person walk. Let the person walk. Oh, 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 oh. I release the power of God. I release miracles. I release miracles. I release miracles. I release miracles. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing some, some demons living in some people now. I'm seeing some demons. Okay, someone healed on the leg already. Someone healed on the leg already. Someone's eyes have received a touch from Jesus Christ. I see a woman in great pain. A woman in great pain. That the Lord has relieved of that pain. Woman, you can 
Rise up. You can check yourself. You can check yourself. You can check yourself. I see a woman brought a little baby because of a strange affliction. And the hand of God is upon that little baby as I speak. The hand of God. The hand of God. The hand of God. Woman, check your baby. Check your baby. Check your baby. So you can check yourself right now. You can check yourself right now. You notice there is a change. You notice there is a miracle. You notice the pain has gone. You will come to this place, my right hand side. And Pastor Tony will attend to you. You will come to my right hand side here. And Pastor Tony will attend to you. You will come to my right hand side. I'm seeing demons are, are, are taking leave. You come to my right hand side now. So now I want to give a command for evil spirits to begin to leave people. You notice the pain has gone. Your eye can see. Your ear can hear. You can walk. Come to my right hand side. And Pastor Tony will attend to you. Come to my right hand side. Ushers, if they are coming from outside, from the overflow, allow them to come. We'll take five or six testimonies. Please, you may be sitting. Please, you may be sitting. We'll take a few testimonies. Then I will give a command for deliverance. Um, woman, woman, what's her name? Is it possible? Okay, you, Osha, come. Can you shake me? Okay, put it on that woman's head. She's not free yet. She's not free. Put it on her head. All right. Yeah, you notice there is a change. You can come this way. There's a change. Your eyes can see. Your ear can hear. The yoke is broken. Okay. Yeah, release her now. Release her. Release her. Um. Uh. Somebody else get a mic. Uh, where is Teso? No, um, not Teso. Um, Pastor Gabe, get get a mic and interview. Get a mic and interview. Uh, I I think there's a problem there. Bring her. Bring her. Bring. Her. Bring her. Bring her. Okay, leave her there. I'm coming. Now, now, see, see, you are not seeing. Wait. Now, the demon is here. Turn her. And then one of you, touch. And then pray in the spirit. No. Pray in the spirit. No. Now, we need to pray for God to give us eyes. All right, Pastor Tony, what's happening there? Sir, we, we have four... Uh, striking miracles of waist pain. A severe waist pain since 2017. Blasted by the power of God. Uh, three weeks waist pain. Waist pain. Waist pain. Waist pain. Now, all of you with waist pain, I'm, I'm just looking for one of you. I'm looking for one of you. There's, there's only one of you the Lord has sent me to. Not so many people. So the way we'll do it, I'll touch you like this. Touch you like this. Touch you like this. I'll touch you like this. And I'll touch you like this. Which one? Where's Ben again? Okay. I'll touch you like this. Then I ask the Lord, Lord, the one you are sending me to, can you show me? Can you show me that one? By touch of So we release you. We release you from the yoke, from the snare. In the name of Jesus. Okay. Yeah, so that lady is free. That lady is free. It's okay. You can leave her now. Uh, Oga, Oga, come, come here.
So you cannot see that you are changed. As you are like this, you are changed. Are you aware? You are not aware. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let the chain upon this young man be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. In the name of Jesus. Break! Yes, Tony, what's happening? There's someone I'm looking for. The person... No, you people with waist pain, go. I'll finish with you, please. Someone that I'm looking for, the person has gained hearing in one of the ears. I'm, that's the person I'm sent to. You have gained hearing in one of your ears. You have gained hearing. So if, as you are listening to me now, you can come and see me here. Yes, what happened to this one? So we have a miracle of I hear. Since 2014, she is not able to see far. And, she's not uh, able to see far. The doctors are not able to peg it to any name at all. And uh, the doctors cannot give it a name. After prayers, the hand of God rested on her. Now ask she's her. Able to see give clearly. her the mic, sister. Did you feel anything on your body before you received the healing? Did you feel anything? Oh. I felt. And let's give her time to recover. Someone has gained hearing in one of the ears. It is you I'm looking for. Come, sister, come. Let's check if your miracle is permanent. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you. We magnify you. Yes, it's permanent. So now you can give Jesus a big hand. So I'm looking for one of you here. This person that I'm looking for, I'm seeing a demon chasing you. And the Lord shows me that you are not, you are sitting here. Father, that one sitting here, that demons are chasing, can you be so kind? Bring that person. We need to help. Yes, Gabe, what are you doing there? She has been afflicted for some time with some rashes. But while you pray, she showed me some pictures in her phone how the affliction were, but after the prayer, they you are drying up already. You can't find the rashes on your body again. Yes. Come. Let me see the picture. Okay. This hand here. The one that, you came with this one at the neck. I think we need to give. You, the, the one on there. How I wish they could project. Now, I ne I've never seen this one in my ministry before. Can we, can we celebrate Jesus? Can we celebrate Jesus? It is permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes? Our brother here has had um, pain on his right ear for about two weeks. And uh, he's not able to use earpiece at all. He's, but he's after not... prayers, okay, the, ears. the ear is okay now. Come, let me find out if you're the one. With an earpiece. Have you, did you test it? Did you test the ear? And it is okay. Come, let me find out if you're the one I'm talking about. You are not the one. But we can we exalt the Lord for this miracle? There's someone that has received a miracle on the ear. That's the person I'm looking for. And it's not this brother's miracle. Yes? Five years severe neck pain arrested by the power of God, sir. Five years severe neck pain arrested. Can we give Jesus a big hand? Come. 
Lord, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Yeah, it's permanent. It's permanent. It will not come back. Now, I want to give a command. Anyone that is chained will be loosed. I have seven more minutes. So I want to use it very well. Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight we pray. Anyone in this auditorium, anyone online bound by demonic power, tonight we say to Satan, release those that you have held. Release those that you have held. Release those that you have held. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. One year abdominal pain on both sides. Uh, she's had about six scans, and the doctors are not—they are not able to place it on anything. They are not able to place. And she what came here feeling the pain, and you after came here feeling the pain. The Did you check God. it? Check it? Check it? Check it? Let's be sure. Uh, I can't feel the pain. Can we uh, exalt him? We give you praise. In the name of Jesus, it's permanent. In the eye of my spirit, the eye of my spirit is pointing here. And what I'm seeing in the eye of my spirit is two people with a very terrible spiritual situation that the Lord wants to release. This is the last call I'm making for that person that has gained hearing on one of the ears. Come, I have a message for you. So those of you that are here, can you, from here to here. No, don't stand up, just raise your hand. The Lord will find you. No, the hands are too many. Raise only one hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, those ones that are seated here, that you showed me in the spirit, I ask that your mighty hand might descend upon them. 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 Ushers, bring those to be oh, loose. So bring those two people. Please bring your hands down. So these five minutes that I have, I want to give you something. You don't need to stand up. No, 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 no. You know, on the day of Pentecost, I was sitting down, and then the Holy Ghost. Bring those ladies. We need to do a deliverance quickly. Oh, so there's one of you here. There's one of you here. The Lord wants to empower you to send you back to your family so that you can destroy what is there. In the next 17 seconds, the hand of I've carried for so long to be broken. So break, 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 break. It is the lost way. Break. Release her. Is it possible for me to... Ah. Someone in the congregation, some time ago, you were given... A demonic, a demonic tool to help you, to assist you. 
You no longer use it, but I see the spirit following you about. I see the spirit. Father, that one that this demon has been following. That one that this demon is, okay, the person is outside. Uh, ushers, help me go outside. Father, that one the demon is following, arrest! Ushers, go outside, you will find them. Arrest that one in the name of Jesus. It's the Lord's will for you to be delivered, for you to be liberated, for you to be set free. So we break the yoke on your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you found the person with the ear? Lady. So why did it take you forever to come here? Answer me, answer me. You were afraid to come. What, who are you afraid of, me? Or the Holy Ghost? Come, 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 come. I need to empower you. Lord, power for the journey. Where is the second one? Come, take power, take power, take power. Take power, take power. Take power, take power, take power, take power, take power, take power. Oh, fire. Holy Ghost, fire, born. Romana. Oh, fire. Holy Ghost, fire, born. Everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Come on and sing fire. Oh, fire. Holy Ghost, fire, bomb. Everywhere. Oh, fire. Where are the ones from outside? Number one. This one, where is this one from? From the back. <clears throat> so put, put your hand. Put your hand on the umbilical cord. Yes, cut it. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Holy Ghost fire. Yes, put your hand there. Pray in the spirit. Hey. Now listen. All the ushers, all the ushers, stand at attention. Drop anybody you are carrying. Drop. Stand where you are. Stand where you are, Usher. Stand where you are. What I'm seeing now, one of you needs a touch. Ushers, you are helping to carry people. But there's a challenge that we need to deal with. Father, that Usher, whether inside. Uh, are these all the Ushers? Brother T. Ushers, are you upstairs? Wave your hand. Let me. There's one of you that's in a serious challenge. Father, in the name of Jesus, that usher that is challenged, in the name of Jesus, I ask that your mighty hand will descend upon that usher anywhere he or she may be standing or sitting. Standing or sitting. There's an empowerment that is coming to you so that you can go home. You can go home and defeat the enemy. In the next 17 seconds, oh God, anywhere the usher is, outside, inside, on the balcony, I ask that that empowerment will come upon that usher. From what I'm seeing here, the virtue has left me. The virtue has left me. The virtue has left me. The virtue has left me already. It has left already. Holy Ghost! Okay, help me with that usher. The virtue left already. The virtue has left. Help me with that usher. It's a serious case. Yes. Tony, what happened to the lady? Oh, Gabe, is it you? Yes, she has been experiencing this wait, for the past. Wait, is that my usher? Come. This is a serious case. What I'm telling you is a serious case. Bring her. Holy Ghost, fire. Hey. You know, 
If I say this, you will not believe. Please, I need your help. You join me here. Join me here. Join me here. There's something we need to uproot now. Stretch your hand here. Stretch your hand here. Stretch your hand here. We need to uproot something. It's a family. Oh my God. It's rooted in the family. It's rooted. It's rooted. It's rooted. Now I uproot. I uproot it. I uproot it in the name of Jesus. I defeat the spirit of delay. I defeat the spirit of manipulation. I defeat the spirit of disfavor. I defeat the demon that manipulates your seasons. Today, 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 I, I bring an end to the reign of darkness around your life. Yes, yes, what happened there? It's on our left ear. For the past six months, I think there's a deposit inside. Six years, sorry. Six years? Yes, like there's a deposit inside. It will open, it will close. But after the prayer, the ear is now very clear. Come, come on. The Lord sent me to you. Did you check it? He checked it very well. And he's, he's hearing. Yes, sir. For six years, you've been in that condition. Yes, sir. Now, the Lord, is the Lord's will for me to release a blessing on this lady. Yes, sir. So that every aspect of your life that has been kept under lock and key, it will open. Lord, if you send me to her, release the grace to open her life. Oh. Yes, what happened to that one? We, we have a compound miracle here. A compound? It's a heart condition. The first one is pericarditis. Then AV2 Doc, heart block. What's the meaning of that? We need it from the doctor's perspective because we are confused. You know, doctors study for six years. They have names for everything. The other day, I was feeling somehow in my eyes, and I went to see the, the eye doctor. And he called it tracheitis. <laughs> and I said, what's tracheitis? He said, one hair from my, from my lashes fell into my eyes. It's called tracheitis. So, Doc, please, give Doc. Doc, help us. No, no, switch on that microphone. Is it on? All right. Yeah, so there is something that is called pericardium that covers the heart. So, it means... Oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Take a deep breath. You see? Okay. No, no, it's okay. All right, so, pericardium. So, yeah, that covers the heart. So okay. it means now that there is inflammation of that layer, which is called the pericardium, that covers the heart. And the term pericarditis. Ah. <laughs> Man, <Mate> take <Iko. laughs> <If coughs> Take me to medical school. I'll just speak in tongues. <laughs> so so, so whenever so, the pain comes on her, virtually half of her body is shut down. It's like paralysis? Yeah. Yeah, she came here on since Sunday with the pain, severe come, pain. Come, come, come. And after prayers, it's been blasted. I think we need to give Jesus a big hand. Lord, we rebuke the stronghold of pericarditis. Let the yoke break. I release you from the sting of this ailment. Okay, the hand of the Lord is upon you. So it's, it's, it's permanent. It's permanent. I've been having this recurring ear pain for about three years. But after the prayer, 
He tried oh, to even drag wait, his ears. I just realized that there are people in the overflow. Give me, where is Theophilus? Take the mic, take the mic. Do that your thing, do that your thing for. <laughs> While I visit, let me pay, let me visit for, for five minutes, five minutes, for five minutes. For five minutes. Oh, you see, we cannot fulfill all that the Lord is saying. Ah. So, the whole world. All right, listen. Those of you that are outside came to look for 21 of you, 21 of you. In the next 17 seconds, the hand of God will descend upon 21 of you. Holy Ghost, from my left hand side to my right hand side to the back of the crowd. Help me locate. Help me locate. Help me locate. Into one. Into one of them. Twenty 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 one of them. Help me locate. Twenty one of them. Twenty one of them. Twenty one of them. Twenty one of them. Locate. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Of God. The hand of God. There is, there is a fire 
that will descend upon someone in uh, at the count of eight, eight, one, two, three, six, seven, eight. Holy Ghost, move. Send upon somebody mightily, Father. Put your hand, 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 Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, put your hand, put your hand, let that fire, let it descend, let it come stronger, let it come stronger, let it come stronger, Holy Ghost, 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 I am to honor Elohim. I enter the secret of secrets. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. Lord, I worship you. as I have, I want to give you now. What will come now? Oh my God. The ability to see into the realm of the spirit is, is a gift, a grace that God has placed upon my life. 
That anointing, it comes with a sense of a burning, a burning. So some people will experience a burning. Lord, let the flames that causes the human spirit to see through the Holy Ghost. Let it begin to come upon your people tonight. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. That your eyes in the spirit will be open. The gift of word of knowledge to know things supernaturally. Put that seed. Put that seed. Put that seed. Put that seed on your people. I see an eagle flying in the skies. High in the heavens. High in the heavens. High in the heavens. There is a prophet in our midst. You have been promoted. I see you in the heavens. I see you. Samantha Bratande 